What is up my dudes? Today, we're gonna to be continuing this tutorial series on 3D compositing a car in Blender. I didn't even bother rolling the intro just because I realized we're gonna have a whole series of videos with someone watching them all together in one sitting. They'll probably get really tired of this. Anyway, today we're going to be setting up our 3D scene from our camera tracking data, as well as importing our 3D model of our car. So without further ado, let's get into it. Also in my last video, someone was commenting, asking if I could upload the source footage that I'm working with so that you can follow along with the exact same footage at home. And I think that's a great idea. So in the description of this video and the last couple of videos and all the videos for that matter, there will be a download link to this exact video footage I'm working with. So if you're lazy and don't wanna go shoot it yourself or can't for some reason, you can follow along with this video. But honestly, shooting your own stuff is what makes VFX fun because you get an idea and you think of how it's gonna look in your head and then you use VFX to make that a reality. So you can use this footage, but you're missing out. Okay, so we left off right here, we just finished doing getting our camera solve and I got mine down to 1.08. So now that we have that data, we need to go ahead and apply it to a 3D camera. So for that, we're gonna go over to the left under the solve tab, scroll down to the bottom and click set as background. That will take our video footage and set it as the background to our camera, which of course we'll want if we wanna put a car over it. Next, we're gonna hit set up tracking scene, which doesn't look like we've done a whole lot, but if we go over to the 3D view under layout, we can see that all the stuff has been added. Now this default cube is still there, which we can go ahead and just delete. Let me go ahead and turn on my shortcut so you can see what I'm doing here when I'm clicking my right left or middle look at that now you can see exactly what i'm doing so if you want to go ahead and delete something just select it and hit the x and then hit delete so we have this scene here and if we pull up our timeline here we can actually play through it and you can see this camera move and this is a 3d camera tracking data and it's moving exactly how we move the real camera in real life it's really cool here if you if you hit this camera button in the top left you'll go into the camera view and it's purple right now but if you go to the normal playback sections and we play through you can see that it's moving just like our real camera did you're probably wondering what's happening here it doesn't look quite right well that's because we need to now orient our camera sort of anchor it in the correct orientation that we shot it in so to do that go ahead and go back over to the motion tracking window and what we're gonna do is under solve, go down here on the left, under orientation, we're going to select three points to choose as our floor plane. So this is why I was saying it was really important to have three points on the ground earlier during tracking. So it'll make sense in a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to find a frame here that looks good, this looks good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select three trackers and I'm gonna choose these three trackers to define my floor plane. So you need three on the floor like this, the farther the out they are, not necessarily better, but you don't want them to all be in a line. Like I wouldn't want to choose these three because that would not be a very good representation. We want to have three in three different areas to uh, triangulate, if you will, uh, the floor plane. So now that you've selected those three in the bottom, we're going to go ahead and click floor. And now you can see here it's set the plane as our floor. So if we go over to the layout, we now see that our ground is much more. Let me go ahead and just turn off that. Now we can see that the floor plane is actually lined up with our camera. So if we go here, we can see that moving around. Now it's still not quite perfect as you can see here. It doesn't look, actually that looks really good. Yeah, that looks really good. So you can see here, this red line going across, it's tracked very quite well. Now that we've oriented our ground plane, what we're also going to want to do is set our scale. So to do this, we're gonna go ahead and go into the solve tab again. And down here under set scale, if we select two trackers, we can type in the distance between them and it will set the scale of our scene. So for instance, if I knew between this tracker and this tracker in real life was uh, 2.5 meters, I could type that in and then hit set scale and it would scale everything accordingly. I don't really have it here. I don't really, I didn't really take any measurements of where things are. If you want to be super accurate, you could go and measure the distance between two points and then come back and type in what that would be. For someone like this, it's not super imperative as long as the scale is close enough. Um, later on, once we start placing the car in the scene, we'll be able to mess, we'll, we'll probably come back and uh, change this a bit just to fine tune it. Next, we should go ahead and set our origin. So just click a point. I just can do mine in the center of the driveway. It's really up to you and click set origin. And if we go back to layout, we can see that our origin is now set to that point. Now that we've set our origin, we can go ahead and set the orientation of our axes. So since this is our origin and I want the X uh, axis to be going this direction, I'm gonna choose a tracker. I'm gonna click set X axis. And that's going to make this tracker sit directly on the X axis 
keeping this tracker as our origin. So if we go back to layout, we can see our X axis has been lined up with our thing. So for instance, if you wanted um, the X axis to be lined up with this tracker uh, in our origin, I could click this and set X axis. And now if we go back to layout, we can see the X axis is lined up with that. Obviously we don't want that though. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually, I think I can just undo it. There we go. So that's uh, really good actually. I think that's really good scene orientation. And you might wonder why we're spending all this time orienting our scene, but getting a good scene setup that's accurate to your video clip will make it much easier later on when you're trying to scale a car orient it and figure out how we want it to look it'd be a lot easier if everything is uh lined up well okay so i would call that done for our scene orientation now what we're going to do is go ahead and import our 3d model of our car i left a link in the description where you can download the exact model that i'm using of course um you could use any car model but i'm going to use that model for this um tutorial series just because I think it's a good model for um, beginning and it looks really cool so that's cool too. So when you download that you will get a .rar and once you extract it you'll get a folder called AC Cobra. Open that up and we have all these files. There's a lot of different file types here but luckily this person gave us a .blend file so I'm going to use that. So if you open up that .blend file, you'll get this project file, which is a whole lot of stuff going on here. And we don't really wanna mess with all this stuff. All we want is the car model. So if we hide all this extra stuff going on around here, we can see this is our car model, and this is the only thing that we want. So to do that, before we do anything, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the plus icon on the top right, go to general and choose layout so we get our normal layout back that we all know and love. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just hide or delete, it's really up to you, um, everything but the car model so that this is the only thing we have left in the scene. Now we can see this car is split up into a ton of different sections which is good when we go to do our materials because we have a lot of uh, you know a lot of leeway in that um, but it's bad because it's really hard to move because if I want to move something I don't move the whole car. Um, so to fix this what we're going to do is select all of the parts of the car and put it in a single collection. So to do that you can hit the B key and you'll get this crosshairs and with that you can select the car and I, all its parts and then you're going to hit the M key for move, and then we can move it to all these collections, but instead we're gonna hit new collection at the bottom, and we're gonna name this car. Very appropriate, I know. All right, now on the right, you see we have this car collection with all of our parts of our car in it. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and just save this. If you want, you can save it as a copy, um, but I don't need the original, so I can always re-download it if you mess up the file. So I'm just gonna save it and then close this out. All right, we are now back in our own project file, and what we're going to do is go up to File and then Append. And this will allow us to go into another .blend project file and take specific parts of it into our current project. In this case, we just want that car collection. So uh, go ahead and navigate to the uh, downloaded project file. In this case, my mine's called shelby.blend. There's also shelbywd.blend. Not sure what the differences are there. Feel free to look at that and see what it is. I just use shelby.blend. And inside that, we can go ahead and find our collection folder. And inside there, we have the car collection, which we made earlier, which has all the parts of our car. Now, with that selected, we're gonna go ahead and hit append from library. And now you can see we have our car here. And if we open up our outliner here on the right, you can see we have now this collection called car. And inside it, we have all of our parts. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Now, if we hop into our camera view, we can see it looks kind of dumb now because obviously the scale is not right at all. But if we go through, we can see that it actually is tracked to our camera. So you can see how this is gonna work later on once we add our materials and lighting, it's gonna look pretty cool. Okay, that will about do it for this tutorial. Sorry it's taking me so long to get these out. They kind of take a long time to make, uh, but I'm enjoying it and I hope you are too. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below and I will see you in the next episode. I'm Josiah, thanks for watching. Pretty accurate, you know, one meter is the right size, so our yeah, two, two meters, meters tall. Yeah, yeah.